Hello everyone, welcome back to my class and today is the last lecture of module 5. Now as you remember in the last class we started with Michelson interferometer. Today we will cover one more topic in Michelson interferometer and then we will start talking about its application. Now in last class uh, we derived an expression for uh, maxima, the condition of maxima. Now, uh, we have also talked about the case when the separation between the two mirrors which is delta d, we, uh, uh, if it is reduced then we saw that the, the angular position of different fringes it, it should also be reduced. Okay. This can be understood through this relation which we derived in the last class 2 d cos theta is equal to m lambda. This was the relation which we talked about in the last class. Now in this relation what I am saying is that if delta d which is the separation between the two mirrors or the thickness of the air film if this is reduced then what will happen is that since on the right hand side we have lambda which is fixed and we have m which is an integer which is again fixed therefore right hand side is fixed. Now since we are varying delta d and we want the left hand side to be fixed then we must play with cos theta term. Now since delta d is uh, getting reduced then should theta should also be decreased so as to keep the left hand side of this equation constant. Okay. Now if we reduce theta then what will happen? Now these are the fringes which we observe and what is theta? Theta is the angular position of the fringes, yeah? this is the theta. Now since we are reducing theta then what will happen is that the fringes will move towards the center, yeah? they will shrink and with shrinking they will come at the center and then they will collapse, they will disappear from the field of view. Okay? Therefore with reduction in the fringe, uh, the mirror separation with reduction in delta d the fringes will disappear at the center of the fringe pattern and slowly if we keep reducing delta d, if we keep reducing the separation between the two mirrors, the number of fringes in our field of view will reduce and a situation will come when there will be only few number of fringes. Now if we again reduce delta d to 0 or if we overlap the two mirrors so that the delta d is equal to 0, then what, what will happen? All the fringes will collapse at the center and there would be a dark, uniform darkness in our field of view okay? because the, the air gap is 0 and uh, since air gap is 0, the condition of minima will satisfy here yeah? because we are also taking into account the the extra path, uh, extra phase difference of pi due to internal and in external reflection which happens at beam splitter. Okay? Therefore a uniform darkness will prevail when the air film thickness or the separation between the two mirrors is 0. Okay? Now in this situation suppose the angle of incidence is almost equal to 0 or if we are la normally launching the light into the system then cos theta turn would be 0 and this uh, equation we will be having this equation here 2 delta d is equal to m naught lambda naught. Okay, m not m not is again uh, a integer. Yeah. Therefore for central dark fringe we will have this relation. Okay. Now we were having two mirrors we slowly reduce the separation and then merge them then what is the other uh, possibility? We can keep rotating the micrometer screw which is attached to the mirror M2. Then the image of uh, M1 will now travel on opposite side and the air gap between the mirror will again now open okay, but in opposite direction and slowly delta will now D will now increase and if delta D is increasing the new fringes from the center will start to appear. Okay? This is what we discussed in the last class. Now suppose the separation between the 
to mirrors is fixed ok. For fix delta d as is written here the successive dark rings satisfy the following expression yeah. Now, what we are doing is that we have fixed uh, the separation between the two mirrors yeah these are the two mirrors and the separation which is delta d is now fixed due to this uh, separation there is a formation of some ring fringe pattern and then we can just assign some angular uh, positions to the different rings ok. Now, delta d is kept, face, kept fixed. Now, if we vary theta, if we focus our attention to different rings, okay, then different dark rings starting from the center, sorry, starting from the center, the successive dark rings will satisfy these criteria. Okay. This, this condition is from the central ring and then this condition is for the next order dark ring and for this we will have to write m naught minus 1 yeah for next order it would be m naught minus 2 and the corresponding theta will vary yeah? In, uh, the, for the first one theta is equal to theta 1 for the second one theta is equal to theta 2. Similarly, for pth uh, ring theta is will be equal to theta p and this number will be equal to p now ok. Similarly, we can write this relation for all the dark rings which are appearing in our field of view ok. Now, if you want to uh, know the angular position of p th ring suppose this is our p th ring and we want to calculate this theta p ok. If you want to calculate this theta p then you will have to calculate the ang angular orientation of the central fringe and calculate the angular orientation of the theta p and then subtract them and this will give the the angular orientation or angular position of the p th ring and this is what exactly uh, is done here in this relation what we did we subtracted this which is uh, the condition for central dark fringe with this relation ok. These two expressions when they are subtracted this gives us this relation which is nothing but the expression which gives us the position of pth dark ring ok. Now, in this relation theta p is coming with cost cost term ok and for small theta the cost term can be expanded yeah we just consider the first two term in the expansion of cos theta and from here if we substitute this expression of cos theta back into the previous expression then we get the value of theta p the angular uh, position of p th ring ok. And from here we can also get the angular position of p minus p minus 1 th ring or angular position of p plus 1 th ring and from there we can calculate the angular width ok. Once angular width is there we can also calculate the usual width the width of the particular ring as we did in Young's double set experiment as we did in Newton's ring experiment the similarly we can do it here also ok. Now, in this slide we will talk about applications of Michelson interferometer and the first application is measuring wavelength ok. We can do uh, we can measure the wavelength using uh, Young's double slit, Newton's ring and as well as Michelson interferometer. How to do it? We know that for constructive interference this condition holds 2 delta d cos theta m is equal to m plus half lambda naught where m is the order of the right ring and theta m is the corresponding angular position ok. Now, we know that in our setup we have two mirrors ok and uh, attached uh, to one of the mirror is our micrometer ok. Now, if we play with the micrometer or if you play with the separation between the two mirror the fringes in the our field of view either appear or disappear here. Yeah? Now, to measure the uh, wavelength of the light what we do is that we start rotating the micrometer attached with the mirror here. Yeah? This rotation will gives either appear or disappear certain number of fringes ok. Let us say that the change 
in the number of fringes are the fringes which disappeared in from our field of views del time. Okay. And for this disappearance or appearance, we rotated uh, the micrometer by a certain distance. Okay. Now, what would be this distance? This distance would be the separation between the two mirrors before the rotation of the micrometer and the, uh, and the separation between the two mirrors after the rotation of micrometer. If we subtract these two separations, this will give the readings of, of the micrometer. Okay, this is what exactly the micrometer is doing. Okay. Therefore, we have this relation, then we change delta d okay, and therefore, m changes say the change in m is delta m and change is delta d is delta d 1 minus delta d 2. Okay. Everything is being calculated for the normal incidence, therefore, we have neglected here the cos theta term. Okay. Now, once it is done, once a micrometer is rotated by a certain distance which can be easily read on the micrometer scale and the, the fringes appeared or disappeared are counted, then using this relation we can calculate lambda yeah, because del time is known, we know how many fringes appeared or disappeared and this distance is known, this is nothing but micrometer re reading. And from here delta lambda can sorry lambda naught the wavelength of the source can be calculated. Yeah. Now, next application is in measuring the wavelength difference in doublet. Okay. If we use sodium lamp in Michelson interferometer, then we know that in sodium lamp there are two lines 5890 nanometer and 5896 nanometer. They are very closely uh, placed. Okay. The separation between the two wavelengths is very small. Okay. In this situation, when we are having a source which produces doublet or we are having a source which have two wavelength which are very closely spaced, in that particular case we can calculate the wavelength separation of the doublet or, and how to do this? This can be done by observing successive concordances and discordances then what is concordances and discordances? Now, since there are two wavelengths in our source, the first wavelength say lambda 1, it will produce its own interference uh, fringe pattern, which of course, would be concentric circular ring pattern. Okay. Similarly, the second wavelength will also produce its own concentric circular ring pattern. Okay. Now, it may so happen that both the wavelengths simultaneously produce its own concentric ring patterns and the dark of one falls on top of the dark of other. Similarly, the bright of one falls on top of the bright of other. In this situation, the dark fringe will become darker and the bright fringe will become brighter. Okay, and this is what exactly is uh, shown here in this figure. Now, you see the here for the first wavelength, this is the circular ring pattern and the for the second wavelength, this is the circular ring pattern okay. and the separation between the two mirrors is such that or the micrometer is rotated in such a way that the center falls on the center, the first uh, this uh, ring falls on the first, the second falls on the second and so on. And in this particular case, the dark, the, the, the resultant, this is the resultant of the overlap. When this fringe overlaps with the this fringe pattern, then this results. And we know that dark is more dark here. Dark is darker and bright is brighter because dark fringe is overlapping, the dark, dark fringe of one pattern is overlapping with the dark fringe of another. And similarly, bright is overlapping with the the bright pattern in the second uh, fringe, uh, for the second wavelength and therefore, we get better contrast now okay. and this is called concordance. Okay. Similarly, now if the dark of one 
falls on the bright of other ok. If the dark rings for wavelength 1 falls on the bright ring of wavelength 2 then we will get uniform illumination yeah this is the pattern of first wavelength this is the pattern of second wavelength if they both combine we get this and since dark is being compensated by bright and bright is being compensated by dark we get uniform illumination in our field of view and this phenomena is called discordance yeah better contrast better visibility darker fringe Dark, darker dark, brighter bright, this means concordance and if uniform intensity distribution, uniform field of view, discordance here. Yeah? Now, by setting the system on successive concordance or on successive discordance, we can calculate the separation between the two wavelength, okay. we can set the system such that the concordance appear in that particular case we can write the uh, either maxima or minima condition for the two wavelength and then we rotate the micrometer and then we fix again for next concordance yeah the next concordance means if it is concordance number 1 the successive concordance will give uh, the next condition for uh, maxima or minima yeah and then we write the condition of maxima or minima for uh, this new concordance and from this uh, two relations we can get the wavelength separation which is delta lambda here yeah and delta d1 and delta d2 is the separation between the mirrors okay delta d1 is the separation between the mirrors when there is the first concordance and delta d2 is the separation between the mirror when there is the second chord concordance okay and these two concordances must be successive yeah they must be coming one after the other yeah and once you do this we can measure the wavelength separation now apart from the circular fringe pattern the michelson interferometer can also produce another kind of fringes how to do this now here instead of using point source a parallel beam of light is launched ok in point, point source what, what happens is that beam diverges but here a parallel beam of light is being launched on this Michelson setup ok here you see mirror m1 mirror m2 m1 prime is the virtual image of mirror m1 and the separation between the two mirrors is d delta d ok this is our beam splitter ok. Now since parallel beam of light is coming and the film thickness which is uh, the air film which is uh, getting formed between the two mirror is uh, uniform the film is being formed here see this is the film ok which is of uniform thickness then the rays which are getting reflected from the top portion uh, top interface of the air film and from the bottom interface of the air film they will interfere to produce some fringe pattern. But from the picture itself it is very much clear that the rays these these two rays they will have a certain phase difference which, which would be constant throughout the field of view ok. Since the source is launching parallel beam of light the path difference between the rays which are coming to the screen they would be constant throughout the field of view the path difference here would be constant to the path difference at this point this would be equal to the path difference at this point this would be equal to the path difference at this point therefore all points on the screen will see a same type of interference either constructive or destructive or something in, in between but it would be of same intensity and therefore uniform illumination would be there on the screen ok if you launch parallel beam of light and if the mirrors are parallel yeah there is no misalignment if they, if they are perfectly parallel then uniform illumination on the screen and here too 
for constructive interference this is the condition since the inc uh, incidence is normal theta is equal to 0 and cos theta term is gone and from here we can see uh, that 2 delta d is equal to m plus half into lambda and where delta d is the part difference ok. Therefore, uh, we see that uh, fringes are formed which are straight line fringes, but in the vertical direction, but if you put a screen there you will see a uniform illumination on the screen. Now, next case is shown here in this setup. Now, one of the mirror so there are two mirrors and in this setup one of the mirror is tilted ok with tilt one of the mirror ok. Now, again a parallel beam of light is being launched, but we deliberately tilt one of the mirror and therefore, the air film which is formed between the two mirrors is of wedge shape. Now, in this particular figure the mirrors are tilted by theta by 2 and therefore, the the, the reflected ray the angle between the, the vertical and the reflected ray would be theta. Okay. But in any case we clearly understand that the air film is now wedge shape. Okay. Since the air film is now wedge shape and we have already studied what is the fringe pattern in case of wedge shape and the fringe pattern there we know it would be a straight line fringes okay. and these fringes are called Fizeau fringes are fringes of equal thickness here. Yeah. Wherever the thickness satisfies the criteria of maxima or ma minima, we get bright and dark fringes okay. and these fringes are called fringes of equal thickness because for all the dark fringe okay, we can put pick certain points in the wedge which satisfies the condition of minima for the dark fringe yeah. and if we pick all the bright fringe the corresponding points on the wedge they will cut satisfy the condition of maxima. Okay. Now, apart from this straight line fringes we can also get a curved fringe here. Now, suppose this is how the mirrors are arranged. Yeah. Now, the fringes at the center like as long as we are looking in this area the corresponding fringes they, they will look like a straight, yeah. but if we go for larger d, if we increase d then we see that the fringes start to become like this. The convex surface always, always points towards the, the meeting point of the mirror, okay. the point on which the two mirrors are joining here. Okay. Now, if uh, you put mirror like this then what will happen is that here we will see for this region we will see straight line fringes and here we will see this type of fringes on the other side you will see this type of fringes and if the mirrors are like this then you will see this type of fringes. We see that just by tilting the mirrors we can generate different type of fringes. Okay. The widely studied is this Fajau fringes which uh, this is straight line Fajau fringes. Okay. Now, let us again move to the next application which is measuring refractive index. How to measure the refractive index? We perform the same experiment in, in Young's double slit and there we covered one of the slit with a thin uh, transparent film and then we saw that there is a shift in the maximum and by measuring the shift in the central maximum we uh, calculated the refractive index of the film. Here what we do? here uh, and, and one more thing uh, and uh, while doing that we I uh, also mentioned that we must use white light interference pattern too because the fring fringes in Young's double set experiments are indistinguish indistinguishable and since they cannot be distingu distinguished from uh, uh, each other we require a reference and that reference is provided by white light interference fringes okay? and the shift in the white light uh, interference fringes can easily be measured and detected detected and measured here. Yeah. Now, to perform the experiment for uh, here we first illuminate the setup for fringes of equal thickness with white light okay, because they uh, act as a reference. Now, with the white light fringes at the center of the field of view okay, for 0 optical path difference insert the transparent sheet in the beam path 
to the mirror M1 in in one arm it this means that in one arm we insert the thin film okay we have two arm M1 and M2 yeah in either of the arm you can insert the thin film here I am particularly focusing on inserting it uh, in the arm of mirror M1 okay now if you insert the thin film the fringes will be shifted okay but if there is no white light interference pattern we will not be able to measure the shift because the fringes are identical and therefore we will we uh, while inserting the uh, right after inserting the uh, thin film we switch on again white light and then see how, how much is the shift in the center of the field of view of white light fringes okay using you measuring this shift we can measure the refractive index of the film using this formula yeah and here mu is the uh, refractive index of the film, t is the thickness of the film and lambda is the wavelength m, m is the order. Okay. Now, one point compensating plate is required in the path of mirror m1. Okay. Why do we require compensating plate? If you remember in the first class here, here I show you this figure and uh, what we saw is that this is our beam splitter and this is our compensating place, plate which is inserted in path of mirror M1. Okay, why it is required? To understand this, let us see in this uh, diagram, it is a simplified version of the uh, setup. Now, you see that the light is launched in this direction and the blue light or the blue arrow is going to mirror M1 and the red arrow is going to mirror sorry the blue one is going to mirror M2 while the red one is going to mirror M1. Okay. Now, let us trace the path of uh, blue arrow yeah I will pick a blue color for this. The blue arrow is going in this direction and then it goes here and then it sees that uh, the back face of the beam splitter is painted. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, painted means it is coated with uh, silver or some reflecting material and then after getting reflected it goes in this direction and then it follows this path and goes to mirror M1. Okay. At mirror uh, M1, it sorry mirror M2, yeah, this blue uh, ray goes to mirror M2 and at mirror M2 it suffers reflection. Okay. After reflecting it goes back, then it follows this path here. Okay, and then it goes in this direction where detector is kept. Okay, a part of the light also get reflected in this direction, but we are neglecting it for a while because this is not of, of our concern. Yeah, because we are de our detector is here, the fringe pattern is getting formed here. Therefore, we are only concentrating here. Okay. Now, this blue ray, okay, before reaching to detector, it crossed the thickness of the beam splitter this is our beam splitter it crossed the thickness of beam splitter thrice how from here it crossed first here this is the first crossing and then when then it traversed to mirror m2 this is second crossing and after getting reflected from mirror l2 it again crosses the thickness of mirror uh, sorry this beam splitter this is third crossing it means it is passing through the thickness of the beam is splitter thrice okay, and then ultimately it, it is going to the screen or the detector. Okay. Therefore, blue arrow this is crossing our detector or uh, traversing the thickness of the detector three times. Okay. Now, let us do the same for uh, the other color for the red one. The red one is going in this direction and red one is uh, the part of the ray which is getting transmitted here. Yeah? We said that beam splitter is a uh, on the back of the beam there is a reflecting surface which partially reflect means part of the light is transmitted and the part of the life light is only reflected. Therefore, the transmitting part is represented by blue arrow here. This blue arrow is transmitting and going to mirror M1 okay? and here it suffers reflection it comes here and again get reflected towards the detector. Now, let us count how many times it crossed the width of the detector we see that here it crossed just once. Okay. Therefore, this red arrow it crossed the detector width once one time. 
okay it means the blue arrow is cross traveling through the thickness of the beam sp splitter thrice it means the difference is 2 2 into beam splitter thickness okay this we did not take into account in our calculation while cal calculating minima and maxima minima and maxima we assume that the two beams are traveling the same path length okay but here we see that the beam splitter thickness itself is incorporating the path length difference because blue rays uh, blue, blue color is traveling thrice and red color is traveling once only okay since the blue arrow or the blue line our blue beam is crossing thickness three times and the red be, uh, beam is crossing the thickness one time then therefore there is an additional path length difference which is equivalent to two times the thickness of the beam splitter to compensate for this additional path length difference a duplicate copy of transparent beam splitter now yeah now this duplicate copy does not reflect it only transmit yeah a perfectly almost perfectly transmitting glass plate is placed in the path of red beam okay now if the red if uh, if we put a glass plate whose thickness is equal to the thickness of the beam splitter then what will happen the red ray will now pass through this beam split this uh, compensating plate once while going to mirror m1 and when it comes back after reflecting from mirror m1 then it goes again through the thickness of this glass plate it means it is covering this thickness twice okay and therefore total times becomes equal to 3 which is equal to that of the blue beam okay because of insertion of this glass plate which we name as a uh, name as compensating plate the path length between the two beams becomes equal okay provided the micrometer is uh, adjusted in such a way that the distance of mirror m1 and m2 from the beam splitter is same okay and this is the importance of the compensating plate now these are the applications i have listed the applications of the michelson interferometer here in, in, in this slide we can determine the wavelength of laser light which we saw in our previous slides how it is done we can determine the separation of the wavelengths of a doublet we saw how it is done we can observe the interference of white light we know how it is done and measurement of wavelength and coherence length of an led sources yeah i will talk about coherence in mo next module yeah in detail there i will talk about more about what a coherence length is but just for the clarification when the light propagate then it remains coherent for only a, a finite uh, duration of time and during this time the uh, length covered is called coherence length okay as long as the optical path length is equal to or below coherence length we can observe interference fringes yeah and if the optical path length is larger than the coherence length still the waves will interfere but we will not be able to observe it okay because the coherence is uh, compromised and the fringes would not be sustainable anymore okay having, having said this i will i would also like to uh, list a few advanced applications of michelson michelson interferometer okay we know ligo is there yeah we know uh, it the, it is used in uh, michelson morley experiment but recently uh, in last few year uh, we have uh, people have searched uh, some advanced applications and a few of them is listed here the first one is tunable tunable narrow band filter and uh, second is astronomical interferometry ligo you know 
the third is optical coherence tomography this is used in medical science here yeah? if you want to image uh, a biological sample layer by layer then you also you can use this uh, michelson interferometer okay with this i end my lecture and thank you all see you all in next lecture thank you